Today we're going to be working on modifying this trailer. Now I picked this up as a used vehicle from someone on Kijiji and I got a really good deal on it. Problem was one of the pieces here for the, the loading ramps is broken. So we're going to have to cut this all off and replace it. And what I've done is I have, I'm going to need some more light here, built this 3D printed part. Now this 3D printed part is pretty much a copy of what's there, but the sides are a little bit thicker, not by much, but we're gonna see if we can do that. And if it all fails, we'll just replace this and make something tougher and we'll have a bolt or another piece that goes through here that secures it. And then another modification that we're gonna make or that we're gonna add on to it is eventually we're gonna make this uh, go up and down with a servo. So that's one change that we're gonna do today. The second one is we're going to cut this neck off and we're going to be adding this new piece to the front. Like a lot of those trailers you see, they have just that V shape in the front. We've got a little box to put our chains and our, all our attachment points. So this is going to bolt in to the front here. So what we've got to do now is we've got to cut off this piece right here, remove that and put this in. So let's start. Okay, so to cut this stuff off, there's a few ways that you can do this, all right? First, you can have a Dremel type tool, okay? And we'll just saw this off, probably the easiest way of doing it. Or, you can have one of these, and this will do a really good job too, because it's got little sharp teeth, and we could just go ahead and chop that off as well probably what I'm going to end up using. Or you can do it the old fashioned way and get a couple of snippers and just snip this off. And then with your X-Acto knife, go in after and just clean up those edges. Now we will be using this after to clean up the edges, but for now we're going to cut off the back here and then we're going to measure out the front here and cut this piece out because we're going to have to do some work on the bottom as well. We're going to have to take this out and then we're going to have to remove some of these braces as well as some of this bracing here so that we can slide this new piece inside and attach it. Let's get back to work and start chopping. Cut off the back. We're gonna have to clean up these edges here, okay? So let's get our X-Acto knife and just clean up all these cuts that we've made. And then we're gonna bring in our new piece. I'm gonna test fit, make sure it's right. And you see I've already pre-designed some holes. So we're gonna use those holes, mark them, and then we're gonna drill through and we're gonna attach this back plate. So it's just gonna be held in with some uh, M3 screws. And that way, if we have to remove it, we can remove it and we can make modifications. And I even made a little indent there to keep the old license plate, eh? Not bad. All right, let's do the next step, clean up, and then uh, I'll show you how to mark off these holes. Again, it should be simple, but let's do that next. Let's get back to it. All right, cleaned everything up. I've grabbed the plate and I've used a couple little clamps to clamp it in place. I have to shave down the lights at the bottom here. They were fake anyways, but we're going to go ahead and mark off these holes and then drill out so that we can attach. And on the back, as you can see, there's room here to put some screws and we should be all right. 
Let's get to it. All right, kitties. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna cut along these little braces. We're gonna cut this face right here. I'm gonna take out some of this support structure, okay? Once we're done that, we're going to slice off the rest of this top piece here so that we can test fit the new plate that's gonna be going in right in this section. And then we'll drill some holes for it and see if it works. Let's we'll start cutting. This is now loose, but we gotta break it off on this side, you guys can see. So we gotta cut out some of this bracing here, and this piece as well. Now you'll see that there might be a hole here later, but it's not really that important, because it'll be filled in by that other uh, piece there. So let's start cutting out some of these guys. Excellent. Nice. Snips. And then we'll shave off all the plastic. And go from there. So I'll show you once it's all done and clean. All right, where did we leave off? Oh yes, we wanted to clean this all out. So we have. Now I know I could have just cut this all off in general, but next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this uh, front piece off. We just want to test fit it. Now you see I've done holes already. I've test fitted it so I know it's going to fit. So this will slide in right here and it fits perfect. It's flush with the outside pieces here and I don't know if you can see but with the lid closed it it fits in there just nice. So We'll drill our holes here. I'm only going to use six holes because I think that's all I really need to hold this down. I don't know if I need this front plate because there's going to be three holes going from the top to hold this piece in here. All right. So we're going to use some M3 screws <clears throat> with a round head and that way it'll give us enough clearance because we still have to fit this back in here and this is tight. I mean, it is snug. So that's why we have these recessed holes to keep the heads of the screws in so that this thing can stay vertical. And if I just put this in, you can see there's no breathing room there. All right, so it makes it a little bit tighter. It'll hold its position there because we have to grind down the top here, right? There's a little bit of uh, extra plastic that they use to click. Well, we've taken that click out, but now because this is secured here, it puts enough pressure that this stays vertical. Uh, so yeah, so let's move on. We will take this back out. We know that this fits. Now we're just going to cut this top piece off and hopefully it's a nice clean line and then we'll make adjustments if need. Uh, but I think we should be okay. and cut it all, all right we've cut the two pieces off you're left with this front piece you're left with this back piece now I did use my belt sander to clean this edge up so it was nice and straight 
you can see perfectly straight. Still debating about if I want to keep this top piece or just slice this all the way back because this will be mounting right here. Okay, I'm still gonna have a gap right there. So I'm thinking possibly gonna cut this piece down a little bit. We'll see. Not sure yet, but I want to keep the sides here to reinforce the strength. Um, and then again, drill these holes, put those M3 screws in there, put some nuts on the back. And then next project is to get some wood and slice some really, really thin pieces to make wood boards here so that we can make this look like it's actual wood uh, and finish that up. And then as part of the original process, we drilled holes and started fastening this so that the back ramps can go on and they just snap in place. Hold on. Yeah, they just snap in place. This is a very tight fit so they don't pop out, but they are snug. Right, over time they'll loosen up and it'll still attach to the same point back here. And there we go. And if later on we wanna add lights, we can add some lights down here. Put our license plate in. And we're done. So now let's attach the front here and see what the final project looks like. Well, there you have it. All finished, painted black. Decided to go with sandpaper instead of the thin pieces of wood. Kinda looks real. And I added in these anti-slip guards for the ramps because I noticed a lot of the machines would just slip and slide so these are also 3d printed the mount is on there and as you can see the front I even made some binders and the neck is on there and it just attaches to the back of the truck if you guys are looking for these 3d printed parts Head over to the Colts 3D website. I'll leave a link in the description and you can get all these parts and print them and build this the same way if you like. Also, these straps are made. Nothing special. Just a little bit of ribbon and some thin wire. All right, guys, thanks so much. And hope to catch you on the next one. Remember, keep playing with the RCs.